Hey, Curious Dude here with another quick update about Van Gogh. It's been a long time since I've done an update. Started a new job and winter arrived in where I live. And so we'll give you a quick tour and do a quick session on how to set the uh, end play on the crank. All right, if you watched the last video, you'll notice that we had the uh, engine pulled. So the engine's here and lots of stuff's happened here. Carbs are rebuilt, linkages all are back on, all new fuel system, new fuel pump. Um, just some cleanup, all the new ignition system, that's all being done. And uh, just tidied up a little bit and we're going to deal with that here in a minute. So there's Van Gogh, just nice and warm in the garage. Um, uh, where I live, it's like real winter and real cold. So I don't want to spend any more time out there than I have to. And so energy today is on the end play. Let's take a look, let's learn more. Okay, so to set the end play, there's a couple of things that come into configuration. And this is all from the Bentley manual. The first thing that's uh, really important is that I uh, pulled the oil seal out. The flywheel's been off already. And um, I'm gonna set the end play with a dial indicator. And this dial indicator, uh, the way it works is you get it, you know, you can look at lots of YouTube and figure it out, but you know, a nice stable base. We get it set, it's zeroed. And then what I'll do is um, I'm basically going to by hand, uh, you know, the, push the crank in, make sure it's zeroed out on the dial. And then I'm going to by hand, I'm going to pull on the flywheel and we're going to see what that gap should be. And that's in thousands. So we'll take a look and see what happens. All right. So we'll make sure the crank's pushed in and it is. And then just with my hands, I'll just pull it out and I get to 10. So that's 10,000. Put it back in, we'll do it. I'm gonna do it three times. So we can agree that's 10 thousandths. And if we go to the Bentley, uh, this is what section 66, page 66, end play, we do the measurements and it tells us right here that it should be in and out, watching should be 0.07 to 0.12 mils or point or three, uh, uh, 3,000 to 5,000. Well, I am double that and the wear limit is six. So I'm double that, I'm at 10. So if necessary to make adjustments. And so this is where we have to do a little bit of math. So the next step is I'm gonna pull that crank uh, flywheel off. We're gonna pull the shims out, we'll measure them and do some math. Okay, so there's three shims that go behind the flywheel. And uh, what's important is that we're gonna figure out how thick those are. If you look in the Bentley, it's gonna tell you how to adjust it. Remove the flywheel and reinstall, reinstall it with only two shims and then follow some steps to do some math. Well, we don't necessarily need to do that and I'll show you um, uh, how this will work out. So we are going to need, um, you're gonna need a, a precise measurement. So I'm using um, my caliper here. Uh, I'm gonna go in inches and zero it. And basically I'm gonna measure um, these three shims together and I'm gonna figure out that it is 0.037, okay? And if you're like me and you actually prefer to deal with um, millimeters, we can do it like this too, or 0.94 millimeters, right? So 0.0 or 0.37 or 0.94. So I'm gonna write that down right now. So 0.037. That was inches or point, um, okay, or 0.94 millimeters. So, so this is those three shims, that's the thickness that they take up. And we know that the end gap was 10,000, which was way too much. It should be, I think the factory spec says a uh, 0.0, 03 to 0.005 is what this should be. So minimum, I'm gonna take a minimum, I gotta add a minimum of 0.005 up to 0.008. I've gotta add in thickness to this. So my total, so instead of 0.037, needs to be, if I added eight, it'd be 0 0.045, or if I added just five, it'd be 0.042. So, these good guys here at AVR Imports were one of the few places I could actually find type four shims. And so you can order shims in different thicknesses. It's in the uh, 
it's in the combination. So we can do this a few different ways since I know what I need to be. You can only put three shims in. So I'm gonna measure these shims and we'll see if we can add some difference. So I'll go back, I'll go inches just because that's uh, easiest. So this one here is, a, uh, how, how thick is this one? So that can't be right, zero it. So this one here, you know, is 10. This one's 10. This one's 12. So that's a thicker one. These are two thinner ones. Remember what I said, I wanted to add between eight and five. So we're gonna measure this one and we'll just do some mental math here. So this one's also 12. So if I was to replace a 10 with a 12, that added another 2,000. And this one I feel is even thicker. So that one's 13. So in fact, if I was to take the 13 and the 12 and remove one of these and put it on with my thicker shim, let's see what we get. Remember, we're looking for 0.042 to 0.045. And let's see, that is 0.042 right there, right? So that, or that might be a little bit pinchy there. Let's do that again, 0.042. So that is the minimum spec that we could have if I put these combinations together. So that's how we're gonna determine. I'll put these in there and we'll put the Dal Galloper on, see if we get down to that 5,000 or not. Okay, so uh, I've got it back together with those shims and I've got the pulley grounded up. Now the angle on this looks a little off. I'll just zero that, okay, and we'll see. And we get just over 4,000 there. I'm gonna do it to be consistent. I'm gonna do it three times, just over 4,000. Now, if you remember, the spec is supposed to be between 3,000 and 5,000. I can deal with right around 4,000, so that's spot on. So, um, yeah, just a little, little uh, how you do it yourself. Again, I wanna give a big shout out uh, to these guys at AVR Imports. I had no idea how hard it was gonna to be to actually find uh, shims. I thought, uh, you know, they would actually be somewhat easy to come by, but um, no, actually not, not very that common. Anyways, so I had already done the math, so I knew the two shims I had to buy. And yeah, and now we're within spec. And so the next step will be, I'm gonna pull that back off, that flywheel. I'm gonna put my new oil seal in. I'm gonna put that flywheel on and make sure that they're torqued down to the correct spec. And the engine will be effectively done and ready to run. Um, on a test stand. So some other things I'm gonna work on tonight here in the garage is uh, um, I'm gonna do some cleaning. I wanna get, you see all the original paint. There's quite a bit of dust still in there. So I wanna get a good clean on there. I am going to pull the transmission. It has some uh, leaks from the axle, uh, not from the boots, but it looks like the seal perhaps that goes onto the side of the transmission. I think it's true on both sides. Yeah, you can see quite a bit of collection of oil. So. Um, I think it will be easier in this case to actually put the transmission back on the engine and install them together as one item. Um, I, I actually believe that's gonna be simpler. We had some struggles getting this all out. And from what I've read online, I think that's a better way to, uh, to target that. So we're gonna get the transmission out and do some seal work and some cleanup work. But you know, um, other than that, uh, Things are going real well. So thanks a lot for checking out my channel um, and uh, watch for more updates uh, of what the van goes engine running soon. Thanks for watching.